technologies that counteract the effects of anthropogenic climate change by deliberately intervening in Earth systems. Climate scientists and policymakers are deeply divided over which forms of geoengineering to pursue, if any. What follows is a story in five chapters that makes present such speculative technologies. Each chapter paints a portrait of an Earth following the deployment of one such premissary technology. The planet after geoengineering is an installation of drawings, a graphic novel, an animation, and for the time of today, a short story. Petrified carbon. Can the planet have its carbon cake and eat it too? The fossil fuel industry promotes carbon dioxide, carbon and sequestration in depleted oil and gas reservoirs. More oil out, more carbon dioxide in, more revenue for the largest polluters. The earth trembles and cracks under pressure. The oil industry repurposes its pipelines and tankers into a carbon storage infrastructure. The oceans, the Earth's largest carbon sink, absorb a third of humanity's carbon dioxide emissions, making them more acidic and harmful to marine life. Fully loaded tankers roam the oceans, capturing carbon dioxide emissions in open water algae plantations. The city is a carbon capture machine for living in. Smog-eating towers capture carbon dioxide. A fleet of carbon scrubbers runs down facades. A large volume of CO2 is pulled beneath to the city of the captive carbon globe. A repurposed Cold War nuclear shelter, the city is a recovery plant that compresses carbon in a high-pressure, high-temperature process and turns it into a yellowish diamond. The carat is the new measurement unit of the carbon footprint. City air makes one carbon free, they say. The Arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of the planet. The exposed darker areas of seawater and soil absorb more solar radiation leading to further warming. Bands of reflective glass beads are applied to slow the meltdown. Yet, an ice-free summer looms over the horizon. Less sea ice is more ship traffic. Vessels plant their flags on the seabed to lay claims to oil and gas reserves below the ice. Permafrost thaw releases hundreds of millions of years of buried carbon and methane from the peatlands into the atmosphere. To restore the Earth's white pole, seawater is pumped onto floating dome structures. Methane bubbles up through soil and water and is trapped in biomes with methane-eating methane -eating bacteria. Herds of large herbivores are released onto the tundra to create vast grasslands. Extinct woolly mammoths are cloned and introduced as well. The grazers stomp thick topsoil, protecting the carbon-rich permafrost. Extreme wildfires consume the old-growth boreal forests. Forests become green deserts as monoculture tree plantations expand to meet the growing demand for cross-laminated timber. Indigenous guardians rekindle with prescribed burns, setting off controlled fires within cleared perimeters. The woodland caribou is in the crossfire. The word for word is forest, still. The Alaska-based high-frequency transmitter facility harvests methane emissions from a giant snow globe, an aurora borealis of tiny particles across the sky. The energy-intensive operation is powered by natural gas from the North Slope Petroleum Reserve. Climate change deniers collect even more fortunes. Rainmaking artificially induces precipitation by dispersing substances into the cloud. 
Brain making is also used as a weapon. Operation Popeye was a military cloud seeding project carried out by the US Air Force during the Vietnam War in order to disrupt North Vietnamese military supplies by softening surfaces and causing landslides. All military or hostile use of environmental modification techniques was subsequently banned by the United Nations in 1977. Extreme droughts and global warming have spurred a renewed interest in the pattern modification of vapor flows. Operation Sky River melts snow and channels high moisture bands of air from the Tibetan plateau to mitigate drought and irrigate the Gobi Desert. The resulting rain is promised to be life-saving, literally avoiding a great famine for billions of people. Tens of thousands of crystal-like fuel-burning chambers bla blast silver iodide into the atmosphere. Political strife grows between highlands and lowlands as they compete to secure freshwater resources. Storm kings perform ritual dances and light great fires to invoke rain. Countries that heavily rely on the river basins quarrel the skies for rain. The rainmakers of today prime clouds with particles of, sulfur, of silver iodide. The water cycle is a zero-sum game. Increased rainfall in one region is moisture missed elsewhere. The free silver ion is extremely toxic in aquatic environment. A spiral jetty of dead juvenile fish emerges from the water. Climate scientists debate the use of solar radiation management techniques. Edward Teller, father of the hydrogen bomb, proposes injecting sulfate aerosol into the atmosphere to reflect sunlight away from Earth. The thickening shroud of particle mimics the solar shield of volcanic dust to recreate the global cooling effects of the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora. Operation Sulphur Storm detonates the Cold War nuclear arsenal in the magma chambers of tropical volcanoes. Balloons, kites, drones, aircrafts, and naval artillery continuously spew millions of tons of tiny sulfate particles into the sky. The UN issues a non-binding resolution on the use of this environmental modification technique. Skies become less blue. A bright afterglow is a familiar sight at sunset. The cloud gravitates into equatorial orbit. Saturn-like rings circle the Earth. Clouds of ash deplete the ozone layer, reversing decades of recovery following the Montreal Protocol. The exhaustion of the ultraviolet shield has dire implications for life on Earth. Aerosol particles make it hard to breathe. A crystal vivarium is a refuge for the one and a half billion winners of geoengineering. Four times this number are left standing outside. The continuous conveyor drywall city converts excess sulfur dioxide into synthetic gypsum, wallboard, plaster, and soil additives. Sulfur dioxide inhibits photosynthesis. So the same sulfate production line filters the air for sensitive species. A dust cloud, a shield, a defined shield that protects the atmosphere from 2% of solar radiation offsets the warming effects of greenhouse gas emissions. It orbits in equilibrium between Earth and the sun. The shield is an artificial constellation of dust that is mined from near-Earth asteroids. The empty capsules cross paths with Earth orbiting junkyard of satellites. Large robotic arms extend to capture them. The compacted junkyard is polished into a space-based solar power plant that beams energy to Earth. The helio beam is also a sun gun that concentrates enough energy onto a point to make an ocean boil or a city burn. The thick dust and smoke dull the starry sky. All wars on life begin by attacking the respiratory system. The terror of geoengineering is to be forced to live intimately with the death of the atmosphere 
contemplating suffocation as a real possibility. The respirator goddess chokes as she blows the breath of life into the planet. I'll tell you something about stories, she said. They aren't just entertainment, don't be fooled. They are all we have, you see, all we have to fight off illness and death. Dust plumes close in in an artificial eclipse. Much of humanity is caught in the stranglehold of sulfur and dust storms. Swirling whirls of dust sweep through barren lands. The earth deserves palliative care. Welcome to the climate emergency. <laughs>